ultimately it's about the actual amount of Bitcoin that you get, not the dollar value of it, because of the fact that it's a scarce network. So if there's only 21 million of something, it really doesn't matter what the dollar value is, you want to get as much of that network as you can. And so if you can get to one at this point, rather than waiting for the ETF, not knowing what's going to happen to price, it might dump, it might increase, who knows. But if right now you know you can actually get to one Bitcoin when there's 55 million millionaires in the world, right? There's like 3,500 billionaires in the world. Most of these people have not woken up to it. The fact that there's 55 million millionaires in the world is terrifying, right? 55 million people with a million dollars of net worth and Bitcoin is about to become the premier asset, which all of their advisors are going to start telling them you need to own one Bitcoin. And you're sitting here watching this information going, hey, maybe I'll do it one day. That's not what this is about. So you're about to get priced out. 2024 ETF arrival, you are about to get priced out of Bitcoin. And you need to start making some decisions as to what you're going to do. You need to get your shit together if you're going to actually stay relevant as we create this new future that is going to be led by Bitcoin. At the end of the day, human beings are controlled by two forces uh, when it comes to investing and making money. Force number one is greed. Force number two is fear. It's as simple as that. There is nothing more that drives human beings when it comes to investments. Greed and fear, period. So when you think about it, you might have had this situation where you finally understand and it clicks what Bitcoin is and suddenly you can't get enough of it. Why? Because that's what scarcity does to you. Scarcity attracts, uh, attracts you like, like, like moths to a flame. That's what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is true scarcity. It is everything that all of these institutional funds have been looking for, except it is right in front, right under their nose and they're not seeing it right now. So once they start seeing it, right, once they wake up and once they realize that they're not, they're not blind and what they've been smelling is actually true, they're going to try and get as much of it as possible. And again, that's what I'm saying. Please help me by subscribing so we can share this message to as many people as possible, right? And unless you get to one Bitcoin as quick as possible, you're going to wake up and the price is just going to run away from you, right? No matter what you do, if you miss the boat, you cannot get to the same amount of Bitcoin that you can buy today once the price starts moving up, especially once this institutional FOMO gets in. That's why I'm trying to get people as quick as possible to understand the urgency of an asset that is truly final in its supply. The finality of its scarcity is extremely important. We're about to enter a field and a moment where everyone is going to be competing with everyone else to buy Bitcoin at the right time, right? Because that's what traders think that is right. And eventually they're going to realize that they just need to buy Bitcoin. And that's when the FOMO is going to start. The FOMO will start because this is the first epoch of Bitcoin where the balance on exchanges is going down every single day compared to going up, which was going on in the last cycle. So you got the balance going down, you got worldwide institutional demand about to be unlocked because of the US ETFs. For some reason, some doom and gloom boomers out there seem to think that because an ETF is a cash create ETF, it won't be holding actual spot Bitcoin within the ETF. This is complete bullshit. The ETF prospectus on which it is regulated by multiple entities at the exact same time with oversight up the wazoo means that the Bitcoin will be held in the ETF. The point of the ETF is to hold Bitcoin. The cash creates part. How is the cash being injected into the ETF? But once it's in the ETF, the thing's got to hold Bitcoin. Right? The thing has to hold Bitcoin, it has to be audited, and it has to be regulatory, you know, it, it needs regulatory oversight, which is why there's so many, so much of these conversations going on. And if you think that someone is going to take the risk of not holding physical Bitcoin in ETF, which has such a, such a transparent structure when it comes to the amount of people, you know, uh, scrutinizing it, it, you just don't understand how financial markets work. And you're probably never going to use the product in the first place. So there's no point you thinking about it. This is a, this is straight up doom and gloom boomerang right here with when it comes to, oh, ETF might not hold any Bitcoin. I mean, I, I, I don't even know what to say. It's such a stupid comment, right? It's such a stupid comment and a lack of understanding of what these products are, what ETF products are, 
especially when you've got the biggest asset managers in the world. Yeah, maybe you'll have a little bit of fraud from small asset managers that just spring up ETFs in the future. But you think Fidelity is going to do that? You think BlackRock's going to do that? Come on. What are we talking about here? So, you know, at this point, uh, it is it, the time is, is getting to the point where you are going to miss out if you don't start taking the action and start doing the learning and start, you know, start moving things around rather than waiting for an ETF, right? Uh, and start waiting for this thing. Because you might be waiting for an ETF and that might sound like a good idea to you. But remember, if the price of the ETF, if the ETF launch jumps the price of Bitcoin from 40,000 where you could buy one Bitcoin to 60,000, right? Like you're, you're getting less Bitcoin. Sure, you might be able to earn Bitcoin. You might be able to take part in Bitcoin, but you're never going to be able to own the same amount of Bitcoin outside of the miraculous. Now, you got to remember, in terms of getting to one Bitcoin, Bitcoin's already priced out uh, the poor worldwide, right? It did that pretty much in its first cycle. Um, it's effectively priced out Western middle class at $40,000 per coin this past cycle. Um, next, it will be pricing out those with a 500 thousand to a ten million dollar net worth because remember even if bitcoin goes to three hundred thousand dollars a coin right uh if you have got a three million dollar net worth you're talking about liquidating ten percent of your net worth to buy one bitcoin an asset that you don't understand you've not taken the time to study but you have to do this right now in order to get to that one bitcoin it's just not going to happen I'm hoping to try and be the, the reason why you come out of your shell and take this holiday period, this new year period, instead of wasting time watching bullshit on television to learn about Bitcoin because you're about to get priced out as we go into the next, uh, the next calendar year. You know, for example, uh, people understand what happens uh, with the, in the blow off tops of Bitcoin uh, because they understand FOMO. Right, the fear of missing out. People say, "Oh my God, it's going up." Your taxi drivers talking about it. Your, your gym trainers talking about it. The guy at the restaurants talking about it. Your doctors talking about it. Everyone's talking about it. And suddenly you say, "Hey, maybe I should get a little bit of Bitcoin." And suddenly you have that blow off top that the institutions uh, sell into, or smarter buyers sell into. Right, uh, and you could call that dumb money, um, if you wish. And and yeah, there's an element of of truth that happens with that. But what retail people miss out on is that a lot of this happens on an institutional level too. And that is where I believe that Bitcoin is going, which is why I need you to subscribe to this channel because we need to get this message out to more retail investors uh, before the institutional FOMO kicks in. The institutional FOMO kicks in. What happens is you'll see prices that you've never ever seen before because institutions don't FOMO for you know for two weeks they FOMO for 10 years um, and so you know we're about to enter a world here with Bitcoin where the amount of demand for Bitcoin that's coming is going to be so terrifying so infinitely unimaginable because of what the asset is bear in mind Bitcoin is a institutional asset it can be used for debt collateral it can be used um, you know to, to send payments around the world. It can be used for all these things. And on top of that, it can be used to shore up your profits and to demonstrate to investors that your fund is the one that they should be invested in, right? So the same way that the impulse works for retail market, it similarly works for TradFi as well, right? There is going to be a gravitational pull and competitive impulse in the TradFi world, uh, which will, I believe, leave retail markets head spinning, which is why I keep saying we need to get people to one Bitcoin as soon as possible, because one day you're going to wake up and the price is going to be just running away from you. And there's no circuit breakers in the market to stop that. Uh, and again, which is why I say you need to subscribe. Please help me sub by subscribing to this channel, because the faster you do it, the faster the YouTube algorithm gets spanked and the faster it puts this message out in front of people. Because here's the thing. People are not wired like that, and especially that. That's why I'm trying to get people as quick as possible to understand the urgency of an asset that is truly final in its supply. The finality of its scarcity is extremely important. But 
despite all of this urgency, despite all of whether you do it or not, despite when the multi-millionaires come, despite when the advisors start selling Bitcoin, start seeing ads now already too, but despite all of that, there's always only three rules to Bitcoin. Step number one, you buy Bitcoin. Step number two, you shut the fuck up. And step number three, you get fabulously wealthy.